Hello, my magical friends. My name is Ellie Eberts, and I am obsessed with a kid's show. Tokyo Mew Mew, or Mew Mew Power, for those of you who may have watched it in the States, is a magical girl anime focusing on five girls who are imbued with the DNA of endangered animals. They use their new powers to save the world from an alien invasion. While the original show aired in the early 2000s, it was announced earlier this year that it is getting a reboot! Yes! And since then, I've gone a bit feral with my Mew Mew videos. In my Mew Mew frenzy, I have somehow adopted the goal of cosplaying the five main Mew Mews. So far, I've done Ichigo, Mint, Pudding, and Zakuro. Today, we are going to be tackling the final Mew Mew, Mew Lettuce. Let us begin! sewing, let's talk a little bit about Lettuce's costume and why she was last on my list. Mew Lettuce has been mixed with the DNA of a finless porpoise. Yep, this little cutie. Mm, so cute. She is a timid and shy Mew who only wants everyone to get along. Lettuce is the kind of character that I would find myself really attached to if I were able to watch Mew Mew with fresh eyes. But nostalgia is one hell of a drug, so Ichigo will always be my number one. Now let's talk about Lettuce's outfit. Mew Lettuce is wearing a pair of swim trunks along with a strapless top whose hem is reminiscent of fins. Her outfit also features the garter, choker, and arm poofs that all the Mew Mews wear. Her outfit is a lovely emerald green color and it matches her green bob perfectly. So I had mentioned Lettuce being at the bottom of my cosplay list, even though she's my second favorite costume wise. And honestly, it comes down to these swim trunks. This just isn't a look I'm super confident in. But gosh dang it, I am going to overcome my fears and freaking rock this outfit. So let's do it. First, I'm going to create the trunks. These act as the base of the outfit and will help me determine the hem of the bodice. So they need to be made first. I'm using the Yaya Han Sailor Fuku pattern as my base and a green jersey as my material. I folded my material so that I am cutting two pieces at a time and have traced my first pattern piece. Yanya's pattern has a dip at the waist for the skirt. However, I'm simply cutting my waist straight across the top. Once I've cut my pieces, they will be stitched together at the sides and crotch. Next, I am going to be adding elastic around the leg holes. This will help keep the trunks from riding up and will help us make a nice hem. First, I'm stitching the elastic to the right side of my trunks. Then I'm going to fold it over to create a clean hem and zigzag it into place. Now we can add a waistband to our trunks. I've created a circle of material that is five inches wide and has the same circumference as my trunks. Stitch the waistband to your trunks. In order to help with the fit, I decided to add elastic to my waistband. I folded the waistband over my elastic and I've stitched it into place. Once this was completed, I also added a top stitch around the waistband. When I was working at these, I made a few choices to make myself feel better about them. First, using two layers of material adds a bit of shapewear-like qualities to these trunks. And also, adding the elastic waistband helps to cinch the waist and puts my mind at ease knowing they won't fall off. And now we can begin the bodice. Before cutting into my nice materials, I wanted to make a mock-up. A mock-up is like a test run of your costume. It's usually made with really ugly or cruddy materials and sewn together really quickly. The idea behind using a mock-up is that it'll help you identify and fix the problems in your pattern before cutting into your expensive materials. Normally, my mock-ups have lots of markings and stitch lines on them, but I was able to reuse my Mew Ichigo pattern for this costume, so it already fit me really well. Here's a look at my final pattern pieces. I've cut three copies of my pattern, one from my fashion layer, 
This is the fabric that will show in my final costume. One from Duck Campus, which acts as a structure layer, and one that is half cotton, half fashion fabric. This is my lining. Before sewing my pieces together, I'm going to add seven steel bones. I use steel bones in almost every costume I make. They help create a beautiful and structured garment. I've cut one inch strips of duck canvas and I'm tracing the shape of my bones onto these strips. Then I will stitch the strips on following these markings. Before closing the casing, I'm going to insert my bone. Next, I'm going to stitch together all my pieces, leaving one seam open for our zipper. Be sure to press open your seams. Here's the look at the shell of the bodice. Along each seam, I'm adding two rows of top stitching. This top stitching is an extra little detail from the manga. It adds a nice pop to the costume. With our layers all constructed, it's time to line our bodice. I tend to bag line most of my garments, and this one is no different. I have placed my lining and fashion layers on top of each other with right sides facing. I'm matching up all my seams. Along Lettuce's neckline, there is one notch. I'm marking this by tracing the triangle shape of my open scissors. Once the neckline and hem are pinned, stitch along both seams. Leave the two side seams open so we can flip it inside out. And now that my hem and neckline are stitched, I'm trimming off any excess material and clipping my corners. Next, we need to prep the structure layer to be inserted between our lining and fashion layer. I flipped and pressed my bodice, and now I'm placing it on top of my structure layer, matching and pinning at the seams. Once it's pinned in place, I'm going to trace around the edges, then trim my structure layer. Now I'm putting the structure layer inside my bodice between the two other layers. Finally, I can add a zipper. I'm attaching my zipper to the fashion and structure layer, starting with one side, then the other. Once both sides are attached, Finish the final inch by machine or hand. I pinned the lining to the zipper and top stitched on either side of the zipper, just like I did on all the other seams. I finished this costume with a set of matching new poofs, a pair of green knee-high boots, and an Art of Wigs Grace wig in jade green. Finally, I added a pair of sparkly antenna and lettuces new mark. Okay, so this costume is actually super cute. The bodice is really flattering and I love the little antenna. <laughs> How fun is that? Plus, I've always kind of had a thing for green haired characters. I think the color is really sweet and super flattering. So I love the wig. Thank you to Arta Wigs, of course, for getting me this wig in less than a week, which is pretty crazy considering nails went really slow right now. So thank you. I also ended up 3D printing Lettuce's Lettuce Tinettes. They are so fun to fiddle with and really help finish off the costume. So I guess all that's left in my quest to cosplay all the Mew Mews is to make a composite image of me as all of the girls. But that's gonna wait for another day. I hope you guys will look forward to it. If you want a behind the scenes look into my process or to see my content before anyone else, consider joining my Patreon. I have lots of fun things planned next year, so I hope you'll join us. Of course, don't forget to follow my Instagram, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more cosplay content. Thank you guys so much, and until next time, be sure to keep sewing, stay positive, and have fun. I'll see you later. Bye!